Hello, I'm Claude and welcome back to Juice Boxes and Custard. Today, the third Ruby Vlog. So this vlog is for chapter three, entitled It's Brawl in the Family. That's probably my favorite episode title since Dance Dance Infiltration last volume. I just, I'm a sucker for puns. And uh, they seem to have some pretty good ones in the titles when they choose to share them with the world. So Winter and Crow are finally here, finally uh, made their sort of official intros into the main cast. I know Crow had kind of a cameo uh, bit in the last episode, but this time we really got to see him speak. See him speak? Hear him speak. And see him fight, which I was not expecting to happen so soon. Although we didn't get to see his scythe, we got a tease of his scythe, and quite frankly that tease was almost as bad as Velvet's box tease that we got last volume. Seriously, if I do not see at least one of their weapons this volume, someone is going to have to answer to my fan rage. So the other big introduction was obviously Winter. Uh, she is officially here, and her interactions with Weiss were a great insight into their family dynamic. Um, it's clear that they care for each other very much, and that Weiss very much looks up to Winter, um, even if their relationship is somewhat awkward and very, very formal. It was hilarious to see Ruby trying to fit herself in to, uh, to the way that Winter and Weiss were speaking to each other in that very formal, old-school, aristocratic way. Um, and the facial animations between all three of the characters were great. It's nice to see that they have continued to step up the animation game um, because before the faces were expressive but you couldn't do a lot with them and now it's clear that they must have some kind of different software or upgraded software to do those facial animations because the characters are much more expressive uh, in the face than they were before. During the fight between Crow and Winter, Winter's semblance was shown. Um, she uses glyphs, very similar to how Weiss uses glyphs, but she's using them in different ways. And so the question is, is her semblance itself presenting itself slightly differently from Weiss's, or is Winter just using more advanced techniques? Um, and of course that leads into the question of what's Crow's semblance? Obviously we've seen both Ruby's and Yang's, and he is their uncle. So does he have a similar semblance to one of them, or is his semblance just completely different? It's unclear whether or not he is related to Ruby and Yang through their father, or if he's just related to one of their mothers. Um, we know his last name is Bronwyn, and the woman that we saw at the end of volume two was named Raven Bronwyn. And it looks like she was the fourth member of the team that Crow, Yang and Ruby's father, and then Ruby's mother was on. Um, and so she might be Yang's mother, and that brings up the question of who, how does Crow fit in there? Was he the brother to Yang's mother, or was he uh, both of their father's brother? complicated family stuff. I don't know. I'll, I'll talk about it again later. Uh, back to the fight itself. It's rare to see fully-fledged huntsmen and huntresses actually fighting each other. I don't think it's actually happened since Glinda fought Cinder in the very first episode of the show as a whole, and that was mostly done in shadows and with um, not very close quarters combat. They were very far away. Obviously, Cinder was on a plain thingy, and Glinda was on a roof. So seeing Crow and Winter fighting out in the open with their weapons, with their swords, was very exciting. It looks like Crow has a three-form weapon, much like Pyrrha does, where Pyrrha has the spear, the sword, and the shotgun. Crow seems to have a pistol of some form, sort of pistol shotgun thing, and a regular big sword, as is anime style want, 
and of course the scythe which we still haven't seen and yes i will continue to bring that up until we see it Okay, so lastly, I'll just mention that the scene we got of Crow, Glinda, Ozpin, and General Ironwood in Ozpin's office was great. I loved the moment between um, Winter, I almost said wife, between Winter and Glinda where they're talking about how she shouldn't have fought Crow. Um, and when she's like, he's drunk, and Glinda's like, he's always drunk. Uh, that was just a nice moment of hilarity as it went into what was a very serious ending scene. A lot of exposition got thrown out, but it was handled well. It wasn't just one character spouting tons of exposition for no apparent reason. It was Crow uh, throwing a jab at Ironwood for having brought the Atlas army to Vale, even though they're supposed to be acting subtly, and it looks like Ironwood is new to this whole thing. Ozpin brought Ironwood into this sort of secret society of people who are protecting the world from outside threats before it can cause more grim to attack, much like we saw at the very end of last volume. Overall, really great episode. I loved it, and whether or not, whether it's a world of remnant or a full episode next week, I am very much looking forward to it. In the world. Um, first things first, what is Crow's semblance? We see his eyes flash for a moment before he attacks Winter. This is either just him getting excited to attack, or a hint at what his semblance might be, since right after that, he slams his sword into the ground, and then the ground breaks apart. So could he have a strength-based um, semblance like Yang does, or is his semblance more like the speed of Ruby, since we do see him move very quickly? Although speed seems to be something that most huntsmen and huntresses have in some form, um, Ruby's is just much more elevated. Okay. Also, the other big thing, who is Autumn? In the last scene of um, the sort of adult characters in Ozpin's office, 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 Crow mentions that the bad guys, um, where, where I'm assuming he's referring to Cinder, Mercury, and Emerald, are responsible for Autumn's condition. So is Autumn a person, or are they just referring to the general feel of what's going on? Because Ruby did mention earlier that it was fall. Um, so are they just referring to how the sort of season is happening and how the f people are feeling during that season? Or is Autumn a person who is close to Crow? Is Autumn perhaps Yang's mother? And something has happened to her um, saying that the bad guys are responsible for Autumn's condition and then drinking? Is that possibly why Crow drinks so much? Um, is there a connection with that? Also, last speculation, Crow winks. I know, I'm insane. I'm insane with all this stuff. But Crow winks at Winter before Winter leaves Ozpin's office. So is that just Crow being a douche? Or is that something more? Do they, they obviously already know each other. Do they have some sort of like side plan separate to this? Because it's pretty, pretty clear that Crow does not trust Ironwood um, at all. So was the fight between Crow and Winter all staged to make it look like they're not working together at all? Are they secretly in cahoots? Or was that just Crow being a jerk and saying, haha, I get to stay and you have to leave? We will see. It would be um, a very exciting little twist if it turned out that Crow and Winter are um, somehow involved in a separate team outside of this sort of secret society of teachers and generals. Okay, that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed this little vlog. I hope you enjoyed the sort of me throwing out my crazy wild fan theories. 
If you have fan theories of your own, feel free to toss them down in the comments. Also, if you haven't seen the episode, there's a link down in the description. Probably should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and I will come out with a new vlog next week if there's a full episode of Ruby. If it is just a World of Remnant, I've decided to sort of incorporate those shorter World of Remnants into the full episodes and just have a vlog that is talking about both of them. Um, and again, if you enjoyed this, please like it, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and not like this, and have a nice day. See you next time.